Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 13.78, okay? So it says, when crossing an intersection, a motorcyclist encounters a slight bump or crown caused by the intersecting road. If the crest of the bump has a radius of curvature, rho equals to 50 feet, determine the maximum constant speed at which he can travel without leaving the surface of the road. Neglect the size of the motorcycle and rider in the calculation. The rider, the rider and his motorcycle have a total weight of 450 pounds. Okay, so what we can see in our picture in here is that we're giving a motorcycle and he is about to cross in here to this curvature or this bump that has 50 feet as radius of curvature, okay? So what we need to calculate is the velocity, the minimum velocity at which he's going to pass without leaving this uh, the surface. Causing, caused by this uh, bump, right? So as you guys know, what I like to do is that first I like to write out my givens. So first I have that rho or my radius of curvature is equal to 50 feet. Next, they're also giving us the weight of the motorcycle and the rider to be 450 pounds, okay? So now these are the only two givens in this problem. So what we're going to do now is, guess what, what we're going to do, a free body diagram. So we're going to draw a free body diagram. And in this free body diagram, we're going to simulate our motorcycle and our rider by just a simple square, okay, mm, uh, rectangle. And what forces do we have? Well, in the forces, first of all, I know I have a weight that is given by me by the problem, which is 450 pounds. Then I also have a normal force that is the normal force that um, between the tires and the floor or the concrete. I have the force that the motor of the motorcycle does. So the force, um, we're going to put driver. And since we have uh, tires and we got some road, we probably have some frictional force against this uh, direction. So we're going to have a frictional force going through the left and I'm going to call it FF for frictional force, okay? So now we're going to clarify that our axes, well, where are our vertical and horizontal axes since our radius of curvature is vertical, therefore my normal is going to be in the vertical direction and my transversal will be in my horizontal axis. Now after doing our free body diagram, we're going to perform a summatorial forces and we're going to do a summatorial forces in the normal direction. We're going to assume that going down this case is positive and the reason why we're assuming that going down is positive is that our acceleration in the normal direction, so normal direction, should be going down. And the reason for this is that the radius of our curvature comes from below here. So we know that our curve looks like this. Therefore, our acceleration will want to push us towards our radius of curvature. So knowing that, we will have that this summatory is equal to my mass times my acceleration in the normal direction. And what forces do I have in the normal direction? Well, let's recall, going down is positive, therefore 450 positive. So we got 450 positive minus my normal force, gotta be equal to my mass, oops, equal to my mass times my acceleration in the normal direction. Now, what is my acceleration? Well, my acceleration in the normal direction, as you guys recall from previous chapter, is velocity squared divided by my rho, or my radius of curvature. Now, what we want to find in this problem is velocity. So we have an equation with velocity now. The problem is we have rho, we have our mass, at least we got the weight. So with the weight, we can calculate mass, but we don't know what this normal force is. And this normal force is probably the trickiest part of this problem. And what we need to account for is that we are determining the maximum speed at which he can travel without leaving the surface. So 
at a microsecond before leaving the surface. That means that my tires are starting not to touch the road and our normal force, this normal force, should be equal to zero. Therefore, this normal force is equal to zero. And if we assume this, then we can have the maximum velocity at which this will happen. If we do more velocity than the one that we're going to get, then now my motorcycle lifts. And if we do less than that, that means that we will have a normal force acting on the tires. Okay, so we will have the 450 only, minus zero, well, will be 450, has to be equal to my mass. Well, my mass, we can get it for, from, for our weight, which is going to be 450 divided by our gravitational constant in the English unit. And we're multiplying it by velocity square and dividing by our radius of curvature, which is 50 feet. So we got 50 feet. All right, so now that we have our equation, we can solve for our velocity. And if we solve for our velocity, what is this equal to? So we're going to have the square root of, and let's see, so first we have 450 multiplied by the inverse of that fraction, which is 32.2 divided by 450 multiplied by my 50 feet. And this is all that we have in this square root. As we can see, we can cancel 450 and 450. Therefore, my velocity is just the square root of the multiplication between 32.2 times 50. Okay, so I'm going to put a parenthesis just in case so we don't confuse. And if we plug this into our calculator, let's see what do we get. We get that our velocity is equal to 40. 0.1 feet per second if we round up to only one decimal place okay so we just found the answer for this problem uh i hope you guys like the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one